Hello guys! I haven't posted any movie reviews for some time, and I've been kinda burned out, but recent movies have inspired me to try and get back into the game, so to speak. So in order to catch up, I decided to review every movie release I saw in 2021. I'm going to speed through some of them, so I won't go into that much detail. There will be spoilers, so if I call the movie name and you haven't seen it and don't wanna get spoiled, click off the video, fuck you, let's do this. Willy's Wonderland. Pretty much garbage. It sucks on every level. But, not gonna lie, it was kinda fun to have a protagonist not have a single line of dialogue and not give a single fuck. It has its fun moments, but it's not something I'm going to revisit. Zack Snyder's Justice League. While it was a huge improvement over the theatrical cut, this one was also pretty shit. I get what they were going for, but they still misinterpret the characters. Lots of blame for that lies on Batman vs Superman, but still, I don't understand the praise though. The fans are praising this movie like it's God's gift to mankind. Had this been released in its intended state from the start, it wouldn't have worked. The theatrical release is a mess, with reshot scenes, with attempts to put quippy cape shit humor into it all, cause they, they know it sells. With that stuff removed, and with the characters a bit more fleshed out, I enjoyed it more. Nobody. Great movie. Godzilla vs Kong. Kinda meh on this one, still suffers from the same problems as the other ones. This movie is basically a sequel to Kong Skull Island, but with Godzilla thrown in there. Uh, the titular fight at the end was pretty good, and then they throw in Mecha Godzilla into the ring and it gets muddied up. I'm not a huge kaiju fan, but I do love seeing combined military might in movies throwing absolutely everything and the kitchen sink at some force of nature and they just get completely curb stomped. This is not that movie, however. This is more monster verse shit and it doesn't appeal to me. Mortal Kombat. Kinda meh. The gore was great, the fight choreography was great, and the story was kinda weak. If you're a fan of the games, I'm sure you'll get some enjoyment out of this. Spiral. A spin-off to the Saw franchise, my favorite horror franchise of all time. The original seven films are glorious. Sure, some are better than others, some are outright dumb, but they work for me. Jigsaw retcons a lot of stuff from the previous movies without thinking it through, and it falls flat. This new attempt to breathe life into the franchise stars a copycat killer who makes it his life's mission to avenge his dead father by putting corrupt cops in death games, which is also topical and relevant. Anyway, the, they set up the twist in a very clumsy manner, like, the previous people you see die in the traps, oh, I like, I, I like the traps in this movie, they, they're, they're fine, but you see people in the traps, and you see people die from the traps, but then, like, the second to main character is just killed in a trap off screen. Like, Chris Rock, he, he gets told, like, yeah, by the way, your partner, he got fucking brutally murdered yesterday in a trap, and you're like, huh. It's weird we didn't get to see that. It's almost like the guy faked his death. Oh no, he was he was the killer. Oh fuck. Yeah, so that was that was really sloppy. Yeah, a sloppy attempt at a saw spin-off. Fast and the Furious 9 or F9 the Fast franchise or whatever the fuck this title is going. This franchise went off the rails years ago. I hadn't seen any of them until my friend introduced me to the franchise and I watched 1 to 8 back in 2018. And they were not really my cup of tea, but I got why they had a following. After 5, 6 and 7 it went to shit, but had a very wholesome ending with 7, neatly tying everything together. Fine, we're done, let's move on. Then 8 rolls in and it was just plain retarded, which spawned a terrible spin-off which takes us to part 9. More of the same schlock, pretty much all I can say. There is no use to comment how much dumb shit is in this movie. It has an audience and it knows how to appeal to that audience. Black Widow. Oh boy. It was supposed to be released back in 2020, but um, something got in the way. Not worth the wait, in my opinion. It features characters that I like. Taskmaster was the only one I was really hyped to see and they fucked him up. He was gender swapped for no reason. It's there so that the twist will be more shocking, but you can see it coming. It didn't serve the story. All it did was fill a quota. 
Taskmaster in the comics, right? He's an ex-Shield agent gone rogue assassin for hire. He actually started a business training goons for supervillains. How awesome wouldn't it have been for Black Widow to go against a guy who comes equipped uh, with mimicked abilities of all her friends and teammates? She essentially has to fight all her friends at once. And then Red Guardian was also a nice addition, but he was given nothing to do. So I think this movie falls flat. I mean, it features characters that I like, but a lot of them are fucked up or underutilized, and it's just a weak entry in the MCU. Pig. This was a masterpiece. I am very tempted to put this as my number one pick for best movie 2021. It has a very simple premise, but it's used as a vessel to explore great themes and dealing with loss and learning to move on and such. I saw the trailer thinking I would get a John Wick-esque revenge story, and I was fully on board for that. But no, it's actually a very somber movie that dives into the food and restaurant business of all things. This is like fucking Ratatouille, and I don't mean that in the sense that they're both about food. I mean that both movies use food as an allegory for creation, what you want to add and can add to the world. It stars Nicolas Cage, who is basically a um, loner in the mountain, who lives together with his praised uh, truffle pig, who uh, searches for truffle and then sells them to this guy. And then one day, this truffle pig gets kidnapped, and Nicolas Cage has to go on a quest to find the pig. And we get a deep dive into who he is, his history, and oh, it's, it's fucking awesome. A masterpiece movie, check it out. The Suicide Squad. The 2016 movie was a train wreck. Absolute dog shit movie. It was torn to shreds by reshoots and editing. Birds of Prey didn't really hook me. It was a slight improvement, but still a pretty bad movie. Then, this new one comes in and blows me away. It was actually a very entertaining movie with characters that actually connected with me. Polka Dot Man and Ratcatcher are meme characters from the golden age of Batman, and I never in my life thought I would see them on the big screen, let alone portrayed good. I was proven totally wrong about this movie, and I am very hyped to see Peacemaker get his old show. Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. More like Shang-Shit. It's bland garbage that don't connect to the audience. The main character is a wet blanket and pretty much takes a backseat in his own movie. He's accompanied by his very annoying lady friend who stands for 90% of the cape shit quips in this movie. And we all know I can't fucking stand the cape shit quips. The plot is all over the place and the villain could have been a very interesting dive into Chinese martial arts mixed with mythology. Tony Leung is a great actor and does as well as he can, but he is given nothing to do. Prisoners of Ghostland. Boring, pretentious, just a waste of time. I was hoping for some Mad Max-esque type of deal, but there is no style to the craziness, it's just crazy. There are interesting things they could have done with, like the concept of this crazy world, almost like a purgatory, but they didn't explore it for shit. They don't dive into anything. It may be a poor comparison, but fuck you, I'm doing it anyway. If I watch a post-apocalyptic movie like Mad Max and see various details about the world building, I want to I want them to make sense and have its own sort of fucked up beauty about it. In Ghostland, it's just a bunch of stuff thrown at the screen and it's blah, it's just blah. Venom, let there be carnage. More like Venom, let there be garbage. They simply don't understand the characters whatsoever. Without going on a massive tangent, I feel like they don't understand how symbiotes work. Venom only becomes Venom when the symbiote and Eddie unite. They are Venom, as in the Venom in Peter Parker and Spider-Man's life. The reason Venom is as powerful he is, is because Eddie's and the symbiote's shared hatred for Spider-Man. That's why he's all buffed and monstery and fuck. And that's why Venom refers to himself as we. When Cletus Cassidy gets his symbiote, it merges with his blood. They truly become one, as the Carnage symbiote lifts all the bad aspects from Venom. So Cassidy fully becomes Carnage and refers to himself as me. In this movie, Cassidy can talk to his symbiote just like Eddie can talk to his. That's just one example. But the plot is shit, I don't care, fuck you, moving on. There was one really unintentionally funny line though. You had your chance with Cassidy and you blew it. And that pretty much summarizes the movie. No Time to Die. 
Daniel Craig's final Bond film leaves a bit to be desired in my opinion. There are tons of great stuff in there, the opening is one of my favorites in the entire franchise. It goes downhill after that though. The villain is portrayed by Rami Malek, who is a fantastic actor, but he's given nothing to do. His motivation for revenge is pretty clear, and sure, I'm on board for that. You could have had a really cool, like, frenemy, uh, enemy of my enemy is my friend type of character with that guy, but no, it's just... Fuck you, Bond, I'm gonna fucking poison the world with my fuck. So, yeah, he has a revenge motivation, but then they start to throw a bunch of other shit in there that muddles up his character. And the whole black female 007 bullshit we've had to endure for the last couple of years led up to nothing. She does nothing in the movie except bitch around. And she could have been skipped entirely. She was just there to test out the waters how the fandom would welcome the concept. In other words, pointless. Halloween Kills. Not as good as the 2018 Halloween, but it's the same as with Godzilla vs Kong. You come to see Michael Myers stab people, but then they shove a very bloated message that takes up huge chunks of the movie. And at the end, they, show, they actually show some balls to kill off some main characters. But come on, it's Halloween. The bar is set pretty low already. Just one more to go until they reboot it again in like 10 years. Dune. This movie was fucking fantastic. It's a great first part to what might be one of the most difficult film adaptions to take on. It had its problems though, like the final act doesn't feel as satisfying as I would have liked, and there are several things that are left unexplained. So to those who haven't read the book, it will appear to be a bit lackluster. I understand why they did it though, the David Lynch version threw so much at the wall at once and it just becomes a mess. But I am very satisfied with what we got, and I can't wait for part 2. The French Dispatch. Wes Anderson does it again. This is definitely not his strongest movie by any means. I liked Grand Budapest and Isle of Dogs far more than this one, but you get the sense that he wanted to make something out of this movie. There is a real passion in there to put art to paper, so to say, and I encouraged that a lot in this day and age. Eternals. More like eternal running time. Bloated, boring, feels very out of place. The cast is solid for the most part, and I feel more connected to these characters than the ones from Chang-Chi, but I fucking should since I spent two hours and a half with them. Uh, the villain is kinda weak, whose motivations fall short, the Celestials were neatly portrayed, and if we've ever had an Avengers level threat, this is it. If the Indian Ocean being utterly fucking destroyed doesn't call for some Avengers intervention, I don't know what will. Yeah, not much to say. Fuck this movie. Ghostbusters Afterlife. A safe play, if any. Too many member berries in a place of a solid story. I like very little about this movie, but don't get me wrong, it's not bad, but it's not good either. It's the same situation as The Force Awakens and Rogue One. Not bad movies per se, but movies that can't stand on their own feet and solely rely on referencing previous installments. Hey, hey, remember Ghostbusters? Oh, I remember. Remember Slimey? Slimey. For fun, I drew up a bingo on what things would be referenced in the movie before watching, and I think I came pretty close. But to be fair, looking past all the member berries, I had fun with this movie. It doesn't take a big shit on the franchise like the 2016 movie did. That garbage set the bar so fucking low that this movie almost gets a free pass. Like, it can't be worse than that one, so it's gonna be fine, everyone's gonna love it. Spider-Man No Way Home. I like it. It's the best Tom Holland Spider-Man movie. It's the best thing to come out of Phase 4. I have gripes, as fucking always, so let's get through them first. As always with MCU movies, there is too much cape shit quips. The target audience apparently needs a dopamine burst every 30 seconds and it hurts the movie so much. And they pull several meme references that feel very out of place and forced. And as usual, the hype surrounding these movies are blown way out of proportion. And... <sighs> Like, sure, I get the hype too, but I don't feel the urge to clap at every single scene in the movie. It takes me right out. I can't focus on a movie that I have been anticipating when assholes all around me are fucking talking and not internalizing, taking in the fucking b Seeing all these actors reprising their roles was awesome. William Dafoe, for example. He was great. Alfred Molina, he was great. Toby and Andrew, they were great. 
Fucking Charlie Cox, thank you for cameoing in this movie. It shows that even after all of this time, they understand the characters. It's a shame that it's all overshadowed by that constant need to be funny all the fucking time. I've never really accepted Tom Holland as Spider-Man. He does a good job with the material, but he lacks a key element to his character. The also famous line, with great power comes great responsibility, i.e. there are consequences for your actions. Tom Holland's Spider-Man has been given way too much leeway. A lot of people call him Iron Man Jr., and I get why. In this movie, Peter gets a real taste of what I'm talking about. What makes Spider-Man such a terrific hero is that he is so constantly fucked over by his surroundings, yet he chooses to do the right thing. That is the core concept of great power comes great responsibility. If Spider-Man wanted to, he could be like Green Goblin. He could use all of his immense power for personal gain. Those teeming masses exist for the sole purpose of lifting the few exceptional people onto their shoulders. But he doesn't. He does the right thing even though it fucks him over in the end. And that finally clicked for Tom Holland's Spider-Man. And I can't wait to see more of this Spider-Man. So all in all, tonally it's a mess, but it's otherwise pretty engaging. Now we come to the TV shows. WandaVision. Starts fresh and different than it decays into blah. I zoned out after about half the show. Bringing in Evan Peters to reprise his role as Quicksilver in this universe was a huge deal, but then led to nothing but a tease. Falcon and Winter Soldier. A bit of a return to form, diverting from the cosmic scale in Marvel, with some cool new ideas which then decays into blah. US Agent was really cool, Baron Zemo was just plain awesome, but the spotlight gets shined on this terrorist called Carly. Carl, originally, Koda goes burr, who is just obnoxious and the message is crammed down your throat, it's just blah. Invincible. Great show adapted from a comic I haven't read prior to watching the show. I really enjoyed it, except for one aspect, which everyone has mentioned, the character of Amber. She was a train wreck, I didn't read the comics before going into this one, so I didn't have a reference, but it really messes with the show. Otherwise, it's great. It's really great. Check it out. Bad Batch. Great first episode with potential to explore a post-Republic era of the lore, then it decays into blah. Omega drags the show down into a formulaic mess where they have to get the thing and Omega needs to stay on the ship. Oh no, she didn't stay on the ship, now we gotta uh, save the little shit again. Every fucking episode is like this. There were fun things thrown in there, lots of little easter eggs and stuff, but not enough to save the show. Loki. Fun show that decays into blah. Starting to see a pattern here. Tom Hiddleston is always great as Loki, but here he takes a backseat in his own show to introduce Amora the Enchantress, or Sylvie as she is called in the MCU. Yeah, I wasn't sold on her. They amp up the stakes so much in the show that everything prior and everything preceding might seem meaningless. Oh, Falcon and Winter Soldier has to stop that terrorist bitch? Meanwhile, the fucking fabric of time is dissolving, and Kang the Conqueror is coming through alternate time streams and gonna fuck everyone. So if that goes to shit, nothing matters anymore. And this problem is unfortunately only going to get worse when we get to the Multiverse of Madness. What if? Garbage. Hardly anything interesting is explored. It's generic. Cringe. Just more blah. Some interesting ideas, but not explored. Squid Game. This South Korean series was very entertaining and the message was neatly integrated into the story. So the premise is basically that this organization looks for people who are down on their luck and need money. So they offer these people to compete in these games for a chance to take home a huge sum of prize money. The twist being that these games are life and death. I feel like I got what I wanted out of Squid Game, what I thought I was going to get from Hunger Games. Which starts off really good, but then devolves into all praise our lord and savior Katniss Everdeen slock. Squid Game strays far away from bullshit like that. And it really has that South Korean mark of excellence. I feel like that market is really starting to come through. Much thanks to previous titles such as Parasite or Train to Busan. Squid Game has one low point in the show though. And yeah, you guessed it, it's when the VIPs show up. This scene was really cringy and the acting was just god awful. But despite that one scene, it manages to balance out being a very mature show while at the same time featuring hyper-violent children's games. 
It has really neat set design and shot composition. So overall, I highly recommend you give it a shot. Star Wars Visions. Some ups, some downs. First episode was glorious and a real callback to Akira Kurosawa's work that inspired Star Wars in the first place. It never really came back to that level, but I enjoyed the show overall. It's nice to see a different take on this fucking franchise for a change, and every episode is standalone, so you can pretty much pick and choose here and there, not unlike Halo Legends. Hawkeye. Fun show that decays into blah. But hell, we got Vincent D'Onofrio back as Kingpin for 5 minutes, so <laughs> easily best Marvel Disney Plus show. You're starting to see the systematic establishing of this new generation of Avengers, and I'm not fully aboard with all its characters. I mean, Kate Bishop is fine, but sometimes she can be a real fucking annoying turd. So, uh, I don't know. I, I'm definitely on board to seeing more of her. But some elements of the show were like, mm, yeah, the the tracksuit mafia, and they're all just like, Slo they're all Slavic and they, they just screw around. It's weird to see like Kingpin be in charge of these bumbling idiots. Yeah, so Kingpin, he's great when he's on screen, but it messes with the tone of the show since the rest of the show is quippy humor. And then Kingpin comes in from fucking Daredevil and he's just playing it really straight. So yeah, Echo is gonna get her own show soon and he's gonna be back in that. Uh, so maybe. Maybe we can save this mess, don't know. Arcane. My knowledge of League of Legends extends to basically squad. I've dabbled a bit, but the game doesn't appeal to me. Going into this show, I feared there would be a huge expositional dump to bring you back up to speed on lore, and thank god there wasn't. You are thrusted into this world following a select number of characters that you actually like. Everything starts off small scale, and you learn the political landscape along with the characters, and you get damn well invested in what's going to happen. The art style is very nice as well, and it's going to age like wine. And with that, I conclude the 2021 movie Cavalcade. Oh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. It, it was a blast just spouting bullshit about content. There's been a lot of dog shit coming out this year, but some really fun and interesting movies. Like Dune Pig. Those were definitely the highlights. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.